What's up, everybody, and welcome to my Impact Wrestling Review, uh, the Fallout show after Rebellion from last Sunday. Wondering what's going to happen in the aftermath of all this with the new Impact World Champion, Kenny Omega, as he's collecting belts. Some would say another copy of all scenarios or other people that have been the belt collector in the past or even in this company itself. I am you know, could say Lashley and Kurt Angle, but... Um, Kenny Omega, as he continues to collect belts, what is going to happen with Impact now? Will there be a world champion on this show every week? Think about that for a second. But as we began the show, the roster was basically outside Scott Demore's office. What's going to happen? What, what are they going to do and everything? Basically, he came out and says, everybody wants a piece of Kenny Omega since he's the champion now. But, you know, um, you all can leave. We're going to, you know, have a state of the championship address in the middle of the ring tonight. So everybody needs to go out there. But as everyone left, Don Callis came out. And, uh, hey, thanks, man, uh, for getting rid of those guys, all right? But Callis, uh, you know, he basically told them more that uh, Kenny Omega will be appearing later on the show via Zoom. And uh, Scott Demore says, Zoom? No, no, no. Me and Tony Khan, we agreed to have Kenny Omega come on this show up here in person, okay, physically. Not through Zoom. How come we still don't see anybody from Impact showing up on uh, Dynamite? Let's answer that question. But um, they said Omega needs to, he will be on this show. If he does not show up, they will strip him, well, he will strip him of that world title tonight. Callus basically, um, you know, told uh, Scott that, all right, all right, all right, well, I'll do it since it's on short notice, all right? But as um, Scott Demore was in the ring, basically saying this is what's going to happen after having a rebellion. And this was a unique situation. There will be no rematch for Rich Swan. He should get a rematch in his clause. But given the circumstances and this whole title for title thing, he doesn't get one. And we didn't even see Rich Swan tonight. So with this new show or whatever upcoming show, Under Siege, where have I seen? Was that a movie? I think. I swear that was a movie. I forgot who it starred, though. But I know it's a movie. But Scott Moore said at Under Siege, someone will get a shot, okay? And for the next few weeks now, uh, it'll be a number one contenders match, or if Omega doesn't show up, then the title will be on the line. But uh, Scott Demore basically said for the next few weeks, it'll be qualifying matches to enter this six-way match to see who will become the number one contender. And Scott Demore brought in Jake something, saying, I know you've been wanting this for a long time, and you stood out in a good way. So here's your opponent tonight. Uh, Chris Bay, who was on injury, but it's kind of is back now. So um, with him being back, we had a one-on-one -on -one match right here, right now, to qualify. He's going to be in the Under Siege show. The, the roster was out there. A good match, I should say. Jake something, no, um, didn't lose quick this time, but um, Rohit got involved basically grabbing um, Jake's legs. Um, Chris Bay basically came in doing the roll-ups and doing a leverage win on the ropes uh, to, you know, win the match and everything, which, you know, it does protect Jake in a way given what's going on here, but I would think he would have been in this match but even given Chris Bay is back now. I kind of figured he was going to win one way or another. Jake something, I'm still waiting for a push to happen with him. He's got some good size, and he's got that potential to be in that title picture and whatnot, given that he's not even with Diener anymore, and he's a different man now. So I'm still waiting on that push to happen with him. But I guess he's got to beat up Rohit first. Um, so we'll see what happens up with that. But a very good first segment to basically state the address of what's going to happen with the world title, who will be the next number one contender for it. Um Gia Miller interviewed Taylor Wide, who hasn't had a match in Impact in over 10 years. Well, I didn't think it's been that long, but she said she hasn't, she almost feels like she hasn't been gone long, and she looks forward to, uh, you know, in wrestling and Impact, wrestling Palooza and whatnot. So with Taylor Wilde, me and Beck, yeah, the last time I remember, she was in a tag team with Sarita for those knockouts tag belts. So yeah, she's been gone since like 2011, I guess. And, uh, she was in retirement, uh, but Tennille Dashwood wanted her to be a tag partner, but she basically said no and walked off. Um, as they talked about the qualifying matches coming up and everything, Trey, Mc, not Trey, Mc, yeah, Trey Miguel's, um, one of those, his students and whatnot, Sam Beal came out and he went against W. Morrissey or known as Cass, Big Cass or Cass XL. I don't know why I just didn't go XL and whatnot, call him that, but W. Morrissey said, you know, you may recognize me, but you don't know who I am. And there's a lot of people in the back that do not care. They're bad people. And with an industry full of bad people. The difference is, I'm not afraid to admit it. Cass basically, well, I'm sorry, I'm going to say Morrissey. I'm trying to just go with that now. Killed this dude and hit him with a jackknife power bombs for the win. So, um, you know, Morrissey, we'll see where this is going to go with him. Uh, like I said, the guy looks in incredible shape. I've said this before. I'm glad he got his life. 
back together. And, um, you know, he looks he looks incredible, okay? Um, I would think Enzo's still going to tag with him at one point on TV. So we'll see what happens with that. But, you know, we'll see where this is going to go in this redemption type of thing going on with him. So uh, we'll see what happens. Um, next, Diana uh, Perrazzo was in the back with Kimberly and Susan. Basically, Kimberly thought her squad was going to come out, uh, you know, watch her face uh Taylor Wilde, but Deanna didn't want to do it. You guys take it from here. Deanna basically says, I'm not uh, ducking from Taylor Wilde and everything. I don't duck from anybody. And then um, Jessica Havoc shows up, and then they kind of stare down before walking off then after that. Uh, Willie Mack was in the back talking about what Morrissey attacking him last Sunday. And he says, I don't know why he's coming up after me and everything, but um, you want to take your anger out of everybody, so you want to try with me? I, you want a match? I'm going to give you a match at Under Siege, and we'll see what's going to go now. I'm ready to fight. You you ready to fight? Let's go. Uh, Taylor Wilde went against Kimberly. Taylor Wilde's in-ring return match. Um, I would say she still she still got it. She still got it. I know I haven't seen Taylor Wilde in a long time um, since TNA, and I like Taylor Wilde back then. I always thought she was pretty good. Um and whatnot, because I think she she was a big some of a big part of knockouts division. So I like Taylor Wilde. Um, we'll see where this is gonna go with her. Um, uh, but her again winning over Kimberly, though, a good showcase match to prove that she's back and hasn't really missed much of a beat after being um long gone so long. So that wasn't really bad. Taylor Wilde got the the win with some Indian Deathlock like type of submission thing. So that was good. Um. Next, they were, I guess, looking for out there on Kenny Omega. Kaos is on the phone. Um, Sammy Callahan saying, like, uh, you better hope he doesn't cross paths with me, all right? Because I'm going to at one point. Um, Scott Demore still on the phone. That's Scott Demore. I mean, Don Kaos. Why is it Scott Demore? Um, Don Kaos still looking for him, though. But um, as I asked Scott, you know, uh, any word on Omega? Basically, we're just in the first world champ we had to deal with. That was difficult. Moose showed up basically saying, you know, um, why isn't Omega? Yeah, I see what you're trying to do. You're talking to a former champion himself that wants that shot. Scott Thamore basically saying, you know, it should be good for you. You got it. You got this, man. All you got to do is beat James Storm next week. But then he grabs Scott Thamore and says, says, like, you know, I wouldn't want our friendship become for this, okay? I'm the one that needs to beat Kenny Omega uh, for that title, which I really do believe uh, Moose should win. James Storm says, well, what do we got going on here, huh? Let's know what you're trying to do. You're trying to attack Scott. I did it back then when it was against Team Canada, but now he's like an executive, so I can't. But Storm had some food, though, basically giving it the moose. You know, uh, hey, this is on you and everything. And, uh, you know, it's going to be two of those when I beat you up next week. But I see Moose winning this match to get into this whole under siege thing. Um, you know, whoever's going to be the number one contender, though. Next, uh, Josh Alexander versus Ace Austin in a rematch. Well, well, one-on-one, I should say, this time for the X Division title. This is great. This was fun to watch, okay? I like this match. I like Josh Alexander. I like Ace Austin. This was fun to watch, okay? I like this a lot. Just crazy stuff in this match, I should say. Uh, just, in, man, from Chaos Theory German suplexes to the freaking um, big disaster kick, even almost like a whisper in the wind onto Josh's leg and everything. Um, even uh, Ace trying to use um, you know Josh's finisher, but Josh getting out of it. Ace trying to springboard himself, Josh catching him, kind of going for like a power bomb, and you know on to the back of his knee, and uh, basically put him in like a ankle lock, then kind of twisting the ankle lock, um, how he maneuvered it in it. That was a fun match. Okay, I like so I like his matches. Uh, both of these guys were really good. I don't know what they move Ace on to. I think they need to move Ace towards the title picture, the main title picture. Really, and uh, we'll see what goes from there. But Josh Alexander, I'm glad he's getting a push since the North ended. So him being X Division champion, I like that right now. And this was a really great match to watch. I recommend looking at that. Don Cows is still looking for Kenny Omega. Johnny Swinger showed up with uh, Hernandez saying, you know, you owe me $20,000 after that bet at uh, Rebellion. Callis says, listen, man, uh, you owe me right now, okay? And um, basically, I got air for you to run, all right? I just need you to uh, pay your debt back and uh, go pick up Omega from the airport. And uh, we're all good from there. Which Cal's kind of like, all right, got some moron to pick him up. So uh, he'll be on his way. Uh, the new Knockouts Tag Champions, Jordan Grace and Rachel are being interviewed. Next thing you know, uh, what was it? Yeah, I, I knew that. Um, hmm. Hmm. 
that basically the new tag team champions, Kale Hogan, Tasha Steeles came in basically um, saying they want a rematch at Under Siege, so get ready for that match to go down. Brian Myers versus Matt Cardona. I really don't need to see this match again. I didn't really want to see it last Sunday. This is just to see who's going to be in um, Under Siege, you know, number one contender, six-way match. I don't know why they got Matt Cardona winning. Maybe just because of what happened on Sunday. Listen, it wasn't a bad match. I just don't care about this feud. And I'd rather have Brian Myers win more than Cardona because at least they've built Myers up for a while now, giving him a lot of wins. So I'd rather have seen him in this match more than I would have Cardona here. Uh, Violent by Design cut a promo talking about James Storm. Uh, you know, disappointment. There's no shame of losing to him. But um, basically, it's going to be some payback now. Okay. And Rhino, he has a chance next week to qualify. And uh, we're going to right the wrongs and whatnot. All right. And um, basically, it's going to be in a lot of beliefs and whatnot to end disappointment. So we'll see what goes on from there. Um, next week, I'm actually surprised by this. El Phantasma will debut um, from the Bullet Club himself and New Japan. Um I like El Phantasmo. I've watched his work in New Japan for a good while now. Dude's a former IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. Uh, maybe two of them. I know he's been on that New Japan Strong show. Uh, he's had a lot of great matches over there in uh, New Japan, okay? Mostly in you know, the Junior Weight division and everything, but he's really been good over there. Him tag with Tashi Shimori and, uh, Taji Shimori and just being in the Bullet Club in general. I like the guy. Someone say he's almost like another Balor Nakamura with that entrance, but I like the guy, though. So, um, he'll be debuting next week. And in the main event, we got Sammy Callahan versus Eddie Edwards. He was going to get in the number one contenders match. But it ended up with Kenny Omega finally showing up with uh, Gals and Anderson attacking both of them. And uh, they ended up taking out Eddie and Sammy. Uh, Finn Juice came out for the save, but the numbers ended up going over them. Cal's basically saying that Omega said, oh, you got to start Omega. It was kind of like a celebration thing. Well, no, 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 you're not getting that, okay? So, enjoy the new world champion. He's right here. Right now, as Omega and them stood in the ring before they left everything, leaving everybody else on the ground. So, at least Omega was on this episode, this whole championship celebration they were going to do and whatnot. So, at least he um, had, at least he was actually here. So, um, at one point, you were going to see him throughout the night. What does it mean for Eddie and Sammy? We'll see if they get a rematch next week to see who again that whole number one contender thing. But I feel like Callahan will have something going on with Omega since they've been talking. He's been talking about him, you know, tonight earlier to Callis. So I think we'll see what happens with that. Uh, but I do like the whole six way contender thing. I still think Moose needs to win that match and he needs to be the one to take the belt off of Omega. Honestly, I don't know when Rich Swan will be showing back up, but at least they found a way to get under siege to make it some watchable to see who's going to become the new number one contender to, for that world title, okay? So, um, what's going to see what happens with that. Not a bad episode, like I said, a um, lot of focus mostly on the title picture and everything, so we'll see what goes on with that and see um, who they're going to get in these matches, okay? I like the exhibition um, title match night between Austin and um alexander probably the best match out in the entire night we got to see the in-ring return of uh taylor wilde morsey debut on impact also so a uh, lot of stuff on here okay a lot of good stuff on impact this week so we'll see what happens with that all right looking forward to it but comment subscribe follow me on twitter at hooded night 890 tell me what you think about impact tonight did you like this show did you hate this show what do you think about the fallout from rebellion and check out my rebellion review that is uploaded online right now okay so i'm out of here see you guys later peace out